Four contenders are out to prove they're super chefs by competing in a supermarket. Let's meet them. Chris Zorn, executive chef of an upscale restaurant in Orange County, California. Celeste Gill, a food service director and mother of three from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Eric Tonitz, a private chef and personal trainer from Fort Worth, Texas. And finally, Jill Sharp, a chef blogger and mother of a toddler and a newborn from Bellevue, Washington. Welcome, chefs. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you, it starts off with three very difficult culinary challenges. All right, you ready for your first game? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Let's go in tres, dos, uno, go! I'm gonna make the celestial teriyaki stir fry. We're more in a blend. That's comfort food than Hawaii. I'm pumped. All set. I chose to do a flash seared ahi with a miso mayo and a chive oil. I feel like the easiest route for me is to go Asian. I'm going to do a stir fry dish. It's fast, it's simple. So the first thing I want to go for is beef tenderloin. And I can cook quick and flavor it with just enough spice. Nice, nice, nice. All right, chef, what are you making, buddy? Well, I got some salmon filets, a little bit of cream. We're going to go French today. I'm very passionate about French cuisine, especially the Blancs and the sauces that you use. A Blanc is a cream and butter sauce, and you reduce the cream, then you add in the butter. Normally, I use white wine or lemon, but since my dish was five items or less, I had to use the caper juice. The big thing about searing ahi is you want to make sure that it's raw in the middle. It's a flash sear. So I made my sauce starting with the mayonnaise base and then put a little bit of the miso paste in there and then added the acidity of the lime juice and it really came together for me. This Asian inspired dish is close to the ones I prepare for my pro athletes at home. I'm very confident with this dish, with the stir fry sauce. I didn't want to use it straight out of the jar. I wanted to add some juices of the meat to the sauce to fortify it, to give it a little extra punch that would give it that Asian flavor plus the home cooked flavor. I know using the frozen veggies is a big risk, but life is about risk, and I love to take a risk. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Put that in your pants. Step away, chef. Nice job. So, Chef Chris, we're starting with you. Please present your dish to the judges. I would call it a salmon with a caper per blanc, the perfect tent. My five items were capers, asparagus, salmon, spinach, and cream. Next up is going to be Chef Celeste. Well, judges, right now what you have is your celestial teriyaki chicken right there. And my five ingredients are chicken thighs, ramen, a frozen stir fry pack, teriyaki sauce, and garlic. Now up, Chef Eric. Judges, what I've made for you today is an Asian beef tenderloin stir fry with sugar snaps and red peppers. And the five ingredients that I decided to use today, uh, of course, beef tenderloin, rice, sugar snap peas, red bell peppers, and a prepackaged stir-fried sauce glaze. Chef Jill. You know, I'm from Seattle, and so we have a ton of fish. I chose to do a flash seared ahi with a miso mayo and a chive oil, and then garnished with a few chopped chives on top. This was a very interesting competition, five items, and going with an international dish. Unfortunately, one of you will be checking out. Celeste, thank you very much for competing, but you'll be checking out. Congratulations, chefs. You are moving on to game two in three, two, one, go. They're falling. I'm making Hawaiian dark chocolate crunch. From answering the trivia question correctly, I was able to use one ingredient from anywhere in the grocery store. The first thing I want to do is start a double boiler, melt the chocolates. I know I've got to start the peanut butter cups, get those melted so they'll cool down so I can start shaping those into the truffles. I grind up the almonds and I grind up the cereal for the coating for the truffles. I'll chop up my ice cream cones for the truffles to sit on on the plate. I start melting the chocolate. I want to melt it over the boiling water. That's not working fast enough. So I pop it into the microwave. I'm checking it every few seconds to make sure that it's not going to burn. Can you microwave that? Oh, yeah. You got to get it done fast, right? I get that melted, and then I want to get all of my crunchies all together. So I start chopping up the nuts and all the cereal, and then mix all the chocolate into it. 
get it onto a sheet pan so that way I can get it nice and cool, pop it into the fridge, make sure that my whipped cream is going well. Chris is really motoring Good to get guys, everything on his plate. I mean, I'm jittery now. 15 seconds. I really don't want to serve these judges this dish with this pile of chocolate goop on it. Eight, seven, six, five, four, on, three, Come on, boys. two, one. Stop working. Amazing. Yes. Nice. Amazing. Very nice job. Very nice. nice. All right, chefs, you turned out some impressive looking dishes. This is quite a sugar high. Starting off with Chef Jill. I did a Hawaiian dark chocolate crunch. Some of the crunch inside of it has passion fruit and guava, as well as I topped it with sea salt macadamia nuts. What I've made for you today is a salted almond chocolate peanut butter truffle with a ice cream cone nest. Here we have a triple chocolate s'more. I used toasted treats with chocolate caramel bar infused with marshmallows and then chocolate drizzle. I used to always make it for my son. Chef Jill, Chef Chris, Chef Eric, one of you will be checking out. Chef Chris, you are checked out. Thanks a lot for playing, man. Congratulations, Chef Jill, Chef Eric. The winner of this game will get an opportunity at a $20,000 shopping spree. Three, two, one, go! And they're off! I'm from Texas. I cook steak and potatoes all the time. We're sorry, sorry shoppers, to inform you that the meat department is currently out of stock. There are no potatoes. So I'm just thinking, OK, potato, 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 box potatoes. Got to go with it. I grabbed a puff pastry. I'm making mama's meat and potato pocket. It's called that because mama made it. So when I get back to the kitchen, I know I need to get my cast iron skillet hot. Drop in bacon strips, add those sausages right to the skillet. I made a well-rounded meal with protein, carbohydrates, and fresh vegetables. I sauteed red bell pepper, fresh poblano pepper, and red onion. Thanks work. Working with boxed potatoes is very foreign to me. You worked with boxed mashed potatoes much? Uh, no, first time. Being a chef, you like to use fresh ingredients. I mean, I'm sitting there reading the back of the box thinking, I hope I get this right. Missing taste and flavor. Other than that, it's perfect. I don't want to just serve instant mashed potatoes. I want to be able to kick it up and make it taste better. Adding butter, and fresh chopped cilantro, I think would really pick it up. I have a puff pastry. I'm filling it with some really good mashed potatoes. And on top of that, the sausage with a little bit of spice to it, some caramelized onions, and then finish it off with a nice gravy that I did. Two minutes, chefs. Two minutes. I have to make sure my dish looks better and tastes better than Jill's dish. And I think I've got it with this one. 30 seconds. Come on, Jill, plate it up. I hope that the judges taste this dish. They see me coming through. Yeah. Come on, Jill, pick yeah. it up. See me as a mom and trying to get stuff on the table, but with, you know, a flair. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Put you on your pants. Step away, chefs. Right on. Nice job. That was intense. Let's see how you did. First up, Chef Jill. I made a mama's meat and potato pocket. It's something that I'd make for my kids with mashed potatoes, and my husband loves spicy. So with a little bit of that spice in there, I tried to bring it all together and make something really down home and really me. Chef Eric, you're up. I uh, made for you today a Southwest chicken sausage with a red pepper and poblano garnish and a jalapeno cilantro mashed potato. I wanted to get something hearty. I wanted to get something tasty with the bacon garnish on top. I wanted to get that hearty steak and potato feel with the down-home Texas-style cooking. Chefs, the judges have reached a decision. Both of you rock these games, but only one of you can compete in our super shopping spree, and that person will be Chef Jill. Thank you. Chef Eric, time for you to check out. I was really privileged to watch you cook. You never broke your sweat. You impressed me. Thanks, buddy. All you can do is lick your wounds, so to speak, and still drive and still stay focused. I left it all on the table, as they say. So there you have it, Chef Jill. You have won Guy's Grocery Game. Congratulations. So Jill, in my hand, 
I have a list of 10 items. Each item is worth $2,000. Mm -hmm. And here's your list. Go! I'm adding it up in my head, and I'm thinking, where am I going to go first to get a big clump of these items? And so I went first to the greens. All right, something green. Come on, Jill, let's go. <laughs> Looking for a spice over seven bucks. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, seven six, six, five, four, three. Wow, she's two, hauling. Two, one. Time's up. Give it up for our champion, Guys Grocery Games. Woo!